back to my channel, Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney, and today I'm here to talk about my five top, five, top sewing patterns for um, coats. So um, coats are one of my absolute favorite things to make. I love making coats. I love making coats and I love making jackets, blazers, all that kind of stuff. I just find them very satisfying, fulfilling. I love tailoring. I love pressing crisp seams and using a clapper and molding things. I love sewing with wool, um, although not all of these are wool. Um, oh, and my dog has found a, a bed on the coats. So anyway, so today I'm here to talk with you about five of my top um, patterns, and I have selected kind of a coat from each category kind of of coats. <laughs> so I'm starting off with the most casual, I guess, and kind of working my way through to the most not really fancy though, because I wear all of these day to day, but anyway, you'll understand as I get through these. So I'm going to leave um, a little clip of me uh, twirling around in each coat as I'm talking about it, and then kind of talk you through each pattern as I go. So let's get started. All right. First jacket is this Mimi G for Simplicity. Can't remember the pattern number. I will pop it up top. You guys have seen this, it's my moto jacket. I think every closet should have a short moto jacket. It is such a wardrobe staple. Um, and kind of all of these jackets or coats fall into like wardrobe staples that I think all wardrobes should have. I mean, it's up for opinion, of course, but um, definitely ones I need in my closet. So this is my, I have done a complete video on this. I'm gonna leave a card up there because um, it was not that long ago that I left the video on this. I have it, the body of it lined in this wonderful uh, Lady McElroy, um, lawn. I've lined the sleeves in a slick Bimberg, which you can see there. Um, it's in a pleather, so a faux leather. Um, the details on it are amazing. I love this. It's gotten so much wear so far this um, fall and winter. Um, but again, I'll pop a card and you can kind of uh, hear more about the details of this jacket. But this is definitely, definitely one that I would say is a necessity in everyone's closet. Um, whether it be real leather, faux leather, or not even a leather. You could do a moto jacket in a wool or even a linen, um, and it would be gorgeous for spring, for fall, for even if summer, if you live in cooler climates. So anyway, that is jacket number one or coat number one. Okay, <laughs> coat number two. I've got a little bit of, I have two from closet case here. So this is the first one. This is the Closet Case Kelly Anorak. I love this thing. In fact, this one has been worn to death and almost needs to be retired. So this is kind of um, kind of a cargo style jacket, I guess. I've made it in this, uh, I think it's a poly suiting. It has a little had a little bit of stretch in it um, from Blackbird Fabrics from quite a while ago. This coat is probably three years old. I interlined the entire thing in a red um, flannel. However, since I made this, she has released a lining um, extension pack for this pattern, and I don't have it, but I, I'm, I wanna make another one, and I would definitely purchase it and do it that way. I would love to have like a full lining in this coat. I purchased her hardware kits that went along with the whole thing, um, which I would definitely recommend. It's just so much easier than sourcing your own. I have a little twill ribbon there just to hide seams since it's not lined. My Tomcat stitchery tag. Um, I mean, this is the coat that I like walk and work out in in the mornings. <laughs> it is so pilled just because it's gotten so much love. Um, it's got these wonderful little patch pockets. It's got, I have opted for the, um, uh, the tie at the waist that kind of cinches the waist in. Uh, this one is a little long. If I make, when I make this again, I think I am going to shorten the pattern just a little bit. It's a little long in the torso for me. Um, so it really has to hike up for that, for this to hit my waist. So um, I am gonna shorten it, I think, next time I make it. I get so many compliments on this coat, though. And again, it's a few years old. Probably, I mean, like, right after she released it. So maybe three years old. Um, but I get so many, I, yeah, I wear the living daylights out of this thing. So, yes, plans to make another one. I wanna use her lining extension pack and we'll probably um, quilt the lining to some thinselette. So uh, Sean from Kittenish Behavior is doing that right now. Um, it like her current project and I would totally, I totally want to do that. So Kelly Anorak, such a good staple casual coat. All right. 
Next up is my So Over It Anna trench coat. And I'm gonna pop a card because I've just done a whole little mini capsule on this um, not that long ago. So I will pop the cards up here um, that talk about this jacket. I have lined mine, I've made it in wool, but this is another pattern, um, a trench coat period, that can go for fall. Um, this one will go a little bit into winter, not completely because it is, it's just the lining. Like I don't have any, um, I mean it is a thick wool, but I don't have much insulation in there, so I'm not gonna be able to wear this in the dead of winter. But definitely fall, probably up through Christmas, I'll be able to wear this um, before the real tundra sets in here in Indiana. And uh, this pattern definitely a spring pattern. You can make it in a linen, you could make it in a cotton twill, a gabardine, um, and it, it's just a great almost year-round coat, depending on where you live. But yeah, definitely an almost year-round coat. Um, the pattern doesn't come lined. I threw in my own lazy man's lining, and I talked about it in a video, and I'll pop the card up there for that. But yes, a trench coat is a definite, um, I mean, I think that's on all the lists. You know, all the stylists that do the lists of things that should be in your wardrobe. I feel like a trench coat's always on there. And I love a good trench. It's just so classic. Okay, my second closet case pattern is the Claire coat. So I made this one, um, view B, which is the one, in that view, it's actually the buttons. So it's got an asymmetrical closer. closure. I think it does. Or maybe view B does have it down the center, but it's the buttons. And then view A is the asymmetrical zip. Um, but I did the view B, maybe that's it, the view B collar, because um, I love that high collar. Um, and it, I mean, just keeps me so warm against the winter and everything else. I love the A-line shape of this. I followed, she had on her blog, uh, Heather Lou, Closet Case Patterns, had on her blog a version of the Claire coat where she did an asymmetrical exposed zipper and leather sleeves. And the minute I saw that, I was like, yes, I want to recreate that. So I found a very small hide of leather um, in a leather shop actually in Southern Indiana. And uh, it was just enough to make sleeves. So I did, and it's a two-piece sleeve on this coat too, which makes it really easy to fit um, sleeve pieces onto smaller pieces of leather if you're interested in doing something like that. But I love it. Raglan style, so it's real easy to fit through the through the shoulders. Um, it is fully lined. I used a pre-quilted lining. So it is a, I think it's an acetate, but it's been pre-quilted, um, which adds a lot of warmth to this coat. So I used that for the body, and then for the sleeves, I just used a uh, Jacquard um, Bimberg lining but the quilted pre-quilted fabric is pretty amazing I mean it just adds a lot of a lot of warmth there put a little tab in there for hanging it up um, yes this coat is wonderful um, I get a lot of compliments on it too clearly I love plaid as I'm pulling all these out I'm like oh my gosh of my coats of my five coats three of them are plaid so Probably am good on plaid coats and should go with solids from here on out. Um, but this is a Scottish plaid that I bought um, on consignment actually in a fabric store here in Indianapolis. Uh, but it's a very nice wool and very warm. So there's coat four. And then last, but definitely not least, is my Ramona coat that I made earlier this year for Sew My Style. This coat is amazing. In fact, when I was making this back in February, I found, um, I was reading through like one of my mother-in-law's old people magazines or Us Weekly or something, one of those that she had. And there was a designer coat that literally was this coat. Um, so I did it in this heathered gray wool that I had in my stash that almost looks like sweatshirting, but it's not. This is a gray wool. Um, there's no stretch to it. So I got this amazing rayon lining from Emma Wansock, also back in February, and I believe it was even a remnant. Um, I had literally just enough. In fact, I didn't think I'd have enough to do the sleeves. I thought I was gonna have to do that in something different, but I had enough to do the sleeves. It was one of those that I was pretty sure there's no way I had enough because it was like a yard less or maybe even a meter less than what the pattern was calling for. But like, it was like the lining fabric that kept giving and I was somehow able to get everything out of it. It was one of those mysteries of, oh, that worked out somehow. I don't know if it's because I had to shorten it so much because this is a long coat. Um, 
on the pattern, they do not have uh, markings for closures. So they don't, is that right? They don't recommend closures or maybe it's an optional closure that you could do like a single button in the front. I opted not to only because that designer coat that I saw in the magazine did not have a button and I loved it open and I thought I'm always gonna wear it open um, so there's not really a need for a button. I don't know, I could go back and add one if I decide that sometimes I do want it closed because it's not too thick right there. I would be able to get just a buttonhole um, on my machine through there with like one big button. And I may still do that. Um, again, I made this in February, so I didn't get tons of wear out of it before the weather changed, um, like maybe just a few months. So it's really, it hasn't hit its, its big time um, wearing season quite yet. And we are definitely there. But I love this big scarf, put the big scarf with this. Um, it's wool, so it is going to weather the Indiana win winters well. And again, I have this obsession with um, longer lengths right now. So having this longer coat is fantastic because I hate if I have like a cardigan or um, a layer on like a dress. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. Unless it's cropped, then it's okay. But if I've got layers on, I want my coat to be the longest layer, if that makes sense. If I have like a maxi dress on, I'm a fine with a cropped jacket or coat. I think that looks nice. But I don't want like multiple layers ending on my body. So if I'm wearing a longer lined cardigan like my Mimi G, I want a long coat that will cover it completely. Does that make sense? <laughs> so anyway, that is my Romana and it's going to get, I think, a lot of wear. So I think that wraps it up for my top five. And these are the top five that are currently in my closet that I'm currently wearing. I've made many other coats. Some of them are no longer with me. Some of them have gone to family members um, and are worn by them. Um, I have a couple of spring jackets that I've made that I did not include in this. But I do, I mean, there are quite a few patterns that are, I, again, I love making coats, quite a few patterns that do hold interest to me. And one of them is the Grain Line um, Cascade. It's their duffel coat. I'm, pop a little picture here up, up there of that. That is very interesting to me and I would love, um, I think, to get my hands on that pattern and to make that up. Um, and again, another Kelly Anorak. And I kind of want to do it in a hot pink cotton twill <laughs> and quilt the lining to some thinselet so that I could wear it, especially when I'm out walking my neighborhood and it's freezing and I want to wear a lot of layers underneath it. Um, I think that would work really well in my wardrobe as well. So anyway, those are kind of maybe some future plans for coats because, again, I, I like to make at least one coat, maybe two, every winter. Um, so, yeah. So that's it. Those are my top five coat patterns. Leave a comment below. Let me know what are some of your favorite coat patterns. Maybe one I haven't seen yet. Maybe a big, a good big four pattern that um, I really need to try that's a, just a fantastic coat that you find is a fantastic coat pattern because, again, I love making coats. My late great-grandfather, Jack, who we have named our son after, Always huge clothes horse. I had five granddaughters, loved to take a shopping, loved clothing, um, and always was very conscious of dressing nicely himself. Always said that you should have a lot of coats because a lot of times that's the only thing people see you in. So I'm hanging on to that, that yes, having a lot of coats is a good thing because when you're out and about, sometimes your coat's the only thing people see you in. So, um, yeah, leave a comment. Give me a thumbs up if you like these kind of videos where I'm doing some, you know, top five patterns, um, that kind of thing. And hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. I've got some more fun stuff coming up. I think I mentioned it in my last video, but I have a Sew My Style um, review coming up next week, hopefully, if my um, findings kits from the bra arrive, and they should. So I've got a review for that. And then also I'm going to reveal what I have decided to do and what I've done for my hashtag so frosting that Closet Case and True Bias um, were doing because the deadline for that is um, next week. So um, also if you are in the US, actually I guess the world now, happy Black Friday. <laughs> Yesterday was Thanksgiving. And so I hope everyone who celebrates Thanksgiving had a wonderful time with friends and family and was able just to unwind and just take that time to really be thankful for the blessings that we are afforded um, in this world. I mean, it, it's, such negativity. I think it's great to look back and reflect on things that we should need to be grateful for and thankful for and um, to kind of count our blessings. Um, as far as Black Friday, I am not a Black Friday shopper. If you are one, all power to you. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I hate crowds. I will be on my computer doing my Christmas shopping, probably. Um, not all of it, but 
probably a lot of it. So, um, and probably hitting up some sewing and fabric sales, spending some Christmas money before I've received it. <laughs> But anyway, I hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend spending it with friends and family, and I will see you next week. Have a good one. Bye.